Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to shoot a special video just for you, Pasquale. We hope that this helps you out because you want to know about wiring a game. So we're going to talk a little bit about JAMA wiring. Now, not all games are JAMA. You guys know if y'all have done any history on this. JAMA is an acronym that stands for the Japanese Arcade Machine and Manufacturing Association. What happened back in the day when there was Pac-Man and Galaga and different things, you, they had different pinouts. What do I mean by pinouts? Well, I brought along a JAMA harness that hasn't been installed in a game yet. As you know, there's got to be a way to hook up your game board to all the different components and also to get power to your game board. Well, that's what the harness does. In the pins are these metal things that are up inside of here. I'm going to come closer for you guys to realize this. The pins are here. Okay, inside of here are pins. We call them pins and then we say, what are the pinouts? Well, JAMA has a certain pinout. Pac-Man has a different pinout. Centipede has a different pinout. So what we gotta watch out is what kind of pinouts. You don't wanna go plugging in just any board in any game. Well, about 85, 86 or so, um, people were, all the game boards, in other words, if my Pac-Man board died, I couldn't go test it in my Galaga cabinet without changing some of the pins. So what they did was they come up, they said, let's make all games a certain pinout. That way, you can, without having to buy a new game, we can just trade out the marquee and trade out the board and then voila, another game without having to buy a cabinet. You'll notice a lot of games from that era all look the same. Maybe it's a dynamo cabinet or whatever kind, of, kind of like this cabinet. You see a lot of these around. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about JAMA. And so make sure that is you, one thing you need to ask yourself, is my game a JAMA game or not? Because if it's not, we need to get the specific pinouts for that game. If it is JAMA, then you're in luck because the things we're going to teach you today are going to tell you how to wire that up. So, one thing that you can always know is you say, well, how do I know what's pin one? I'm not sure. Well, you need to be special careful because there is a difference between pin one and, say, pin 20. Now, on mine is etched in here, and it says that this is pin one right here. Also, you'll see a lot of times they'll label part side or solder side. What does that mean? Well, the part side are the chips and stuff that you see on your board, and the solder side would be if you flip that board up, you'd see nothing but little solder dots everywhere. That's what that's talking about. Or, if you're lucky and if you're going to buy a JAMA harness and you have the opportunity, like you go to Bob Roberts' site or something, you can buy one like this that's already labeled. Let me tell you, that comes in real handy. If not, Jonathan's going to put up a chart and you can download it or print it out and use it. You need to know what wires go where. That's very important. But, from experience, I know, and you'll always find that a lot of your JAMA boards have six pins, then they have a space missing, and then they have more. Well, pin seven is always dead. So if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see how this one has no wires right there? That one has no wires going to it. I say dead, they use the word key. So seven is your key. So you'll know that this is not pin seven over here, this has to be pin 7, okay? And, you, and you're going to count left to right, so that means this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you go on the back side, they'll, they won't label them in numbers. They'll start off with A. A, B, C, D, and they don't always go the same because words like C and G get mixed up, so they skip letters. Just learn how to, learn how to use that chart. If you have any questions, Call or contact us. We'll teach you how to use that chart. That chart is very important. You're going to need it. Or you're going to need to buy one that's already labeled. So you'll notice that the first few pins here, it, on your chart, it'll say ground, ground, 5 volts, 5 volts. Then you'll have a negative 5 and a 12 volts. Well, those are all wires coming from your power supply. So you need to find out a lot of times those wire colors match. Sometimes they don't. You need to learn how to read your meter, and that's where you hook up the power coming into your game. So the grounds go to the ground part on your power supply, 
we talked about this some before, the reds being the 5 volts from your power supply. So this end, or those seven, six pins, this is power coming in. This is going to be our power coming into our board. The rest of these pins are going out. So in other words, we got the harness that goes to the monitor that we were looking at earlier. Uh, we also have the buttons and the controls. So that's what all these wires are. So these main wires right here, these six are power coming into your board. You can also, though, jumper off of these, like to your coin lights. Uh, if you need a 12 volts or if you have a certain lighted push button, in other words, that you need to go up there, you could jumper in off of these. So you could make these and out, but most of the time these are power coming in. So we're going to hook up these wires going in, then these wires going out. And all you do is read that chart, and it'll tell you that there's 5 volts, 5 volts, minus 5, which not every game uses, and 12 uh, volts, then you got a key. Then you go down here and that's your green, your red, blue, green, ground, and sync wires. Those are your monitor hookups. That what is what comes off of here and hooks up into your monitor so that your monitor knows what to do or what video to show. And then you go on, you got all these buttons. Now, your harness may not have this many wires because you might just have a one player setup. This is for two player setup. And if you have a three or four player game, sometimes there'll be an additional kick harness, it's called, over here that helps run those buttons. Or I'm thinking that this will handle like six buttons, but if you got like Street Fighter or something, um, or a game that needs an extra button, then you're going to need to have that kick harness. You'll notice a lot of those fighting games will use an extra kick harness. So anyway, you'll just go down through here, and every button will need one of these wires. So in other words, if it says player one up, we'll find that wire, we'll count over. Player one up is, let's say it's pin 25. I don't know without looking at the chart, I don't have it in front of me. Let's say it's 25. We're going to find count over, find 25, take that wire, hook it up to one side of the button. Then we're also going to need to run one of the ground wires. And that's what you've seen us do before, daisy chain. We'll run all the grounds and then come back to this harness. Once that is hooked up, you got a ground in that wire, that button will work with your game. So if you've got just a button that's not working, trace it back to your harness and make sure that the wiring is correct. If you've got something that's not lit up, you can trace it back to your harness. That's where we're always going to tell you. Are you getting 5 volts? Are you getting 12 volts? This is a good place to check voltage too. Instead of checking it at your power supply, check it at your harness because sometimes you lose a little power as the wires loop all around your cabinet. Well, anyway, I know this has been kind of short today, and there's a lot more questions you guys might have. By all means, you know what to do. Call or, or uh, write us, email us, whatever it takes, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But I did want you to see the chart today, know what we're talking about, how it's wired, and how the pins are counted. If you guys uh, have any questions again, though, just go ahead and let us know, and we'll help you any way that we can. Anyway, thanks again for watching today, uh, Arcade Repair Tips video series, now in high depth.